Hey guys, Cal here, and today I'm standing here with the 2024 Toyota RAV4 Limited, and this one clocks in at an eye-watering $40,854. So what do you get when you pay $40,000 for a Toyota RAV4? We're gonna take a look at that right now. Starting on the front of your Toyota RAV4 Limited, you will see your LED projector headlights, as well as your LED daytime running lamps and your LED turn signals right in the middle there. Right below that, you will find your LED fog lights. And then in the center of the front here, right below your Toyota logo, you will find some gloss silver painted slats in the grill. And taking a look under the hood of our RAV4 Limited, you will see your naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder that's putting out 203 horsepower and 184 pound foot of torque. And surprisingly, there's no CVT in here. That's all routed into an eight speed transmission. So that's nice to see. It puts the power down really well because of it. So it has great get up and go, even at some of those higher speeds. And this particular four cylinder, this one's doing about 25 miles to the gallon in the city, 33 miles to the gallon on the highway. But if you you do get the hybrid version of the RAV4. You can take that gas mileage up to about 40 miles to the gallon combined. Moving down the side, you will see your 19 inch painted alloy wheels and those are wrapped in the Toyo Open Country all season. So those are very nice looking, very slick looking wheels on the limited here. Now on your side mirrors, you will see not only your blind spot detection, but you also have that nice turning signal indicator on the outside of the mirror as well. Right behind that, we have our door handles here and I noticed the passive entry on the RAV4 Limited. Even though this is the Limited model, you still only get passive entry on the front two door handles only. You don't have it on all four. Up top, you will find your black gloss painted roof rails right up here. So if you guys got to put a Christmas tree or something up there, maybe a roof box, if you guys are going on vacation for some extra storage. And then the fuel door, in order to open that, you cannot open it from the outside. You just got to go inside real quick, grab the little lever that is next to the lever to pop the hood and then it'll open just like that. Now moving on to the rear of our RAV4 Limited, you will see the taillights here. I can't exactly tell if they are LED or halogen, but I'm gonna guess that they're halogen. I could be wrong, so you have those there. You have your halogen turn signals on the outside and your halogen reverse lights in the middle. So it's pretty interesting to see this many halogen lights on the back end of a limited trim vehicle. Usually when you step up to a limited trim, for most manufacturers, you will see LED lights pretty much on the entire rear of the vehicle. Uh, but that's not the case here with the RAV4 Limited. Then you just have your chrome Toyota badging in the middle, as well as your RAV4 and Limited and all-wheel drive badging, all in chrome. And then opening up the trunk of our Limited here, you will see that I did just have to hit the button right there because I do not believe there is a kick sensor on the back of the Limited here. I do think you just have to hit the button on the trunk itself or use the little button on the remote. They do have a button you can click and hold and that will open the trunk for you. And when you get the trunk of the RAV4 opened, it is a very spacious place back here. It's got a little over 37 cubic feet of space, whereas the Chevy Equinox only has right around 30 cubic feet of space. So that's a pretty big jump considering they're both mid-sized crossovers. So you have a nice big trunk back here. In this particular one, you do have this all-weather cargo liner, which is a part of the $309 uh, cargo liner package. And right below that, you will see we do have our spare tire right there with your jack right in the middle. And then on the outside, you will see your JBL subwoofer back here. And that is because the Limited comes standard with the JBL sound system. So in the trunk here, you do have your JBL subwoofer. And here I am in the back seat of the RAV4 Limited here. And I'm about 6'2 and sitting behind myself where I was just sitting. I didn't move the driver's seat at all. I have it in the exact position that it just was in. And I have better space than I expected. My knees are touching the back of the chair, but I don't feel like they're really digging into the back of the chair and the passengers back here do have two usb chargers as well as some air vents and some nice plush leather because this is the limited so the back seat's a nice place to be i do think that the angle that these seats sit at is a little harsh i feel like they uh, lean back a little bit too far for my liking but uh, i guess that's all in personal preference and then also because this does come with the limited grade weather package it does have these heated seats for the rear passengers back here and some other goodies in the front seat that I'll show you a little later on that come with that package as well. 
And in the front seat here of the RAV4 Limited, I do have a beautiful leather-wrapped steering wheel that is also heated. Again, that is part of the limited-grade weather package, so it's nice to have that heated steering wheel because of that. It's an $815 package on the window sticker. On the door here, I do have my memory seating, so I have two settings for that if I like. All my window switches and mirror adjusters right there. And down below the left side of the steering wheel, I do have some buttons to control my gauge brightness, my heated steering wheel, and a button to open my trunk. So if you guys are going to do a Goodwill pickup or a Target pickup, you can open the trunk right from the driver's seat, which is a nice option to see. And then on the steering wheel itself in the Limited here, I do have some buttons to control the gauges that are just right ahead of me right up there. A button to pick up and hang up my phone calls as well as use my phone's voice functions and then turn the volume up and down right in the left side there. And then on the right side of the steering wheel, I do have the buttons to to control my radar cruise control, so your adaptive cruise control, and then your forward collision alert. I can uh, kind of adjust how sensitive that is with that button right there. And then also uh, activate or deactivate the lane keep assist, so you have that option as well. And then a button to hit the mode if I want to switch what source I have. If I want to go back to my phone's music like Bluetooth or go back to Sirius, I have that button on the wheel as well. And a button to switch what song I'm on in my playlist or go to the next radio station. And another thing I like about the gauge cluster here is even though it's an all digital readout and I don't have any analog gauges, I do really like at least what they've done with it and the way that when you switch your drive modes, you have your eco, your normal mode, and then your sport mode really amps things up, turns the whole screen red up here, as you can see, and really kind of, you know, flashes the wheels. You're in sport mode. It kind of makes it feel a little special. And then right below that, we have some drive modes like your snow mode and your off-road terrain, your general off-road terrain mode button right below that. Those don't do anything special. But when I go into the center dial here, you have mud and sand. When I switch that to the left, you will see there is some sand and some dirt below the RAV4 as well as some mountains in the background. And then if I hit normal, go back to normal mode and switch it to the right and I go to rock mode, rock and dirt mode, they actually have at that point rocks below the RAV4 again with the mountains in the background. So it's really cool the animations that they put up on the screen there to sort of make it feel like a more special experience when you're switching through those drive modes. And taking a look at our 10.5 inch display here for the radio, the first option is sort of like, uh, I'm guessing Toyota's version of OnStar where you can get some navigation assistance and an intelligent assistant so you can get some directions and things while you're out on the road. And then your second button down the line is gonna be your radio so you have your uh, Sirius radio, your FM, AM, Bluetooth radio, all that is going to be in that app there. And then your phone calls button, if you have Apple CarPlay already hooked up, it will route right to your Apple CarPlay screen. It won't go into the Toyota-based phone app. So to get back to the Toyota app, you'll just hit the home button on the bottom and then the Toyota logo. And then it'll take us back here. And then on the fourth option down, I can play with any of the local alerts I have to worry about or tend to. And then the last button all the way on the bottom is going to be my settings for the entire vehicle. And it's going to be your personal info, Bluetooth, and devices, general settings for the whole car. And below that crisp 10.5-inch display, we have our climate controls down here. And these are very easy to use. You have your dual zone climate, so every person can pick their own temperature up here. You have your fan speed buttons right in the middle right there. And uh, because this is the limited, we do have some heated and cooled seats. So that's uh, kind of cool to see up here. Your shifter in the center here is just a standard shifter design. It's not a shifter dial or shifter button. So I do like to see a standard shifter design they're keeping it simple in here and then your electronic parking brake is in the center right to the left of that and on your buttons for the drive mode selector that is all in the middle here we saw how that changes the dials earlier and uh, that also will change how the vehicle performs obviously and then these cup holders in the middle are nice and big and they do hold your stanley or yeti mugs very very well I'll pop that in there it fits in perfectly so great cup holder design here in the RAV4. And in the center console here of the RAV4, you will see you do have a nice little tray to put your things right up top here. And if we take that out and uh, kind of check the depth, it's, uh, it's really not all that deep. I can maybe only get about maybe half my forearm in. So it's uh, not 
not quite as deep as maybe something like the Chevy Equinox in here, but uh, what it does lack for some of that storage in here, uh, it does make up for outside of here. You got a nice little tray up here to toss your things right in front of the shifter. You have a nice little tray right above the glove box to put some things. And then in the door pocket, it is a pretty sizable door pocket for being a mid-size crossover. So you have room to toss things over there as well. And then to the left side of the steering wheel, there's even a little tray right there to toss some of your things. So there's no shortage of space to put your things in the RAV4 here, which I really like. All right, guys, here we are behind the wheel of the RAV4 here, and I can't exactly do any kind of acceleration test right now because we got some slick roads and uh, I don't think I've seen any plow trucks yet so we're not going to do anything too crazy but get behind the wheel of the RAV4 we have a 203 horsepower and 184 pound foot of torque 2.5 liter four cylinder that is naturally aspirated so you got no turbo there and we do have that eight speed transmission made it to this as well now what I will say for the eight speed transmission is it shifts a little rougher than I would like. The, the shifts are a little jarring sometimes if maybe it's downshifting, if you're passing someone, but I don't care how rough any transmission shifts. If I can get a standard, just regular old school transmission in a car over a CVT, I will do that absolutely any day of the week. So I really appreciate Toyota still putting a standard transmission, not putting a CVT in the RAV4 here. So that is nice to see. And then as for zero to 60 times here in the gas powered and not the hybrid version of the RAV4, just the strictly the 2.5 liter four cylinder, no hybrid, that zero to 60 is clocked in at around eight seconds, 8.2 seconds from a few different sources that I've seen online. Now the zero to 60 in the RAV4 Prime I think I read somewhere it's right around 5.5 seconds. So not that anyone's buying a RAV4 for great zero to 60 times, but I just thought that was something interesting to note how much better that zero to 60 time on the Prime is versus just the gas powered one that I'm driving here. And then as for seat comfort in the RAV4 Limited here with this leather, these seats are actually pretty comfy and pretty supportive. I mean, obviously this is an Alexa, so it's not gonna be quite as comfortable as that uh, Lexus leather. I don't think it's quite as soft as the seats that I felt in the Lexus TX350 a couple months back, but I will still say that the leather in here is pretty comfortable, pretty supportive, a little bit firmer than the Lexus, but I will still call these pretty comfortable seats overall. And for me being 6'2", I actually do have really good leg space in here. I would say that I am actually really impressed with the leg space in here for this being a mid-size crossover. I have the seat all the way back right now and I have no complaints. Like if I had to go on a road trip in this, I would be very comfortable in the RAV4 here. Plenty of leg space if you're a taller person. And the first thing I noticed when I got to the driver's seat of the RAV4 here is how numb the steering is. I don't know why the electric power steering is so numb in the RAV4. This is probably the numbest power steering I have felt in quite some time. And I've been behind the wheel of a pretty fair amount of vehicles. So to have the steering be this numb, it's a little strange, especially at lower speed, you'll feel like how artificial it feels. And it's, uh, it's a really, really strange feeling behind the wheel. And as for cabin quietness here in the RAV4, I will say that the road noise from the tires is a little intrusive on the cabin. So I think they can kind of tone that down, kind of put some more sound deadening in here, make that tire noise a little quieter in the cabin here. That would be great for the quietness overall. So not gonna be the quietest cabin in the game. And as for the suspension in the RAV4 here, I would say that it's a little rougher than I would like. It does take some of these Northeastern uh, potholes in a pretty rough manner. It's like pretty jarring when you do hit them. I would say that uh, some of the other mid-size crossovers in the game do have a much smoother suspension. So I would like to see it a little bit smoother in here, but uh, it does kind of have a tough uh, Subaru feel on the suspension here in the RAV4. All right, guys, that wraps it up for my review of the 2024 Toyota RAV4 Limited here. I will say that 40,000 is a steep price for the Limited here, but uh, considering that the price gap between a lot of its other mid-size competitors for everything that you get in the Limited here really is not that bad. I love the leather treatments in here, the heated and cooled seats, the JBL sound system. You get a lot for the money, and then on top of that all, you get that Toyota reliability. So 40000 crazy for a RAV4, but this is a vehicle that's not only going to last for years to come, but it's going to be very comfortable for years to come. I do hope you guys enjoyed the review of the RAV4 Limited today. If you guys haven't already, like the video and subscribe, and I will see you guys in next week's review.